today we'll begin with a very simple topic but it's something that is in the need of the hour we are all uh, very used to the whole idea of stress it is not something new it is not something that uh, has not been spoken about before why we this thought about covering this topic is if we open the newspapers today if we look at the news channels today starting from the kind of wars that are impacting our mental health reading about it on a daily basis to a lot of students and their family members especially uh, struggling in the climate where exam papers are getting leaked and uh, children are not able to cope with the results that they were uh, they are receiving so their expectations are not matching with the results that they have been looking forward to more importantly there is a whole shift in a sudden surge of uh, you know uh, changes in our uh, daily climate right like there has been temperature changes there have been a lot of changes in the way uh, we have changed over the time from past two three years ever since lockdown has ended we're still transitioning back to office routine and more importantly we are also uh, you know uh, coming across different news on a very daily basis which really upset us though we are not directly associated somehow it really impacts on us so uh, with keeping these ideas in mind we thought of covering stress uh, and ways in which we can cope. Today from this workshop, you can expect a lot of coping strategies. Some of you may have come across before and for some of you, it might be very new. We will learn coping strategies together. Uh, while uh, we may also understand how stress is more than just a simple response to, uh, you know, emotions or uh, events that trigger us. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, Ashrita. All right. Thank you. Uh, so today's topic is on stress management and coping skills. Uh, so this uh, we are going to cover on what exactly is stress, how stress impacts on our brain and our mind, what are the limitations of you stress? We are also going to learn a new kind of stress, which is a uh, you stress, or it is also called a good stress. We'll also learn what are the different ways in which stress comes up in our mind and body. And we'll also learn in the end, finally, how we can cope and come out of the whole experience of stress. So stress is nothing but a very simple response to different situations which demand a response. Any situation which expects us to respond, it could be in our behavior, in the way we physically react, in the way we change our mood, in the way we change our thoughts, is all uh, a response to stress. So stress is nothing but an experience which will change your physical reaction, which will change your thoughts and opinions, or it might change your feelings and mood. Universally, uh, when stress as a topic was studied first, it was seen as a flight or fight response. Uh, stress is nothing but a signal to the brain or to our mind where it tells us to either act on the situation or to run away from the situation. If we make a decision or if we choose to act on it, it is called fight. If we are trying to avoid it or run away from the situation, it is called flight. And there's a very ancient take on uh, how we can perceive stress. It is completely automatic in nature. And it can also be seen as a harmful situation or a threat to uh, us. Uh, one example of stress way back in a primitive time was when our forefathers used to be gatherers and hunters. Life was very similar response based for them. For them, it was all about picking up. Uh, they were on survival mode. 
where they were looking after the basic necessities. That is, when where are they going to sleep? What food they're going to eat? And how are they going to take care of themselves? Their life was revolving around very pre basic and primitive needs. But as and when the society began to evolve, there have been new complexities and new challenges that also bring out a stressful response. Today, <clears throat> simple things like making a decision on should I complete my work first or should I make dinner or should I uh, start doing uh, my office work right away or should I uh, finish my house chores and then sit for my office uh, work. Should I take care of my uh, responsibilities of washing clothes or should I watch movie on Netflix? So there are so many complexities which have arised where our stress uh, is channelized onto making a smarter or a better decision. So how does stress work exactly? Uh, there is an entire physical process to uh, stress before it affects our mental or emotional state. It all first begins with our sensory receptors. We are all, uh, most of us have five sensory receptors. Uh, can someone tell me what are they? Very simple. That is our vision, the way we smell, the way we taste food, touch, and the way we hear. So uh, our sensory organs are our sensory receptors. They collect the information from the environment. They directly signal through our nervous system, through our nerves in the channel in our body, and they send a signal to the brain. Now, how do they send this information to the brain? It's through sugar and through uh, glucose and through uh, water. So the information is uh, converted into glucose and it is sent to the brain. Now, once the information is sent to the brain, it will start responding to the situation and it will send the signals back to your body. For instance, it makes your decision in the brain on how you want to respond. What were the two ways we learned? Either we go forward and solve the problem or we sit back and avoid the problem. So this is how our mind makes the decision. It will collect the information from environment. It will uh, send the signal or the information to our brain through neural networks. And then the brain will process. It will make a decision and then send back the information to our body. <coughs> and that is how we react or respond to stress. Now, once the signals go to the brain, they enter a hippocampal part of the brain. This entire region is called hippocampal area, where we respond to physical stress. Examples of physical stress will include danger while you're crossing the road. We make sure that we look left and right before crossing. But suddenly as we're crossing, a vehicle is speeding towards us. We have to make a quick decision whether we should run or should we uh, run either faster or should we stand still there. It all depends on our flight or fight response. On a similar basis, hippocampal is responsible for making that decision at that point in time. So hippocampal will decide whether you should really run fast and cross the road or stand where you are and let the vehicle pass and then you can cross the road. So this is uh, the part of the brain that responds only to physical stress. For example, injury to ourselves or there is a lot of work on your desk and you cannot seem to see that amount of work over there washing dishes trying to go for you know strenuous exercises so you have decided that i want i have decided i want to climb the mountain for the everest now to prepare myself for climbing the everest i have to prepare my body for that and in that obstacle am i ready to prepare myself is one stressful situation i have to navigate then I have to prepare myself to uh, wear uh, shoes and go for a walk daily.
then I have to gradually increase the intake of my exercises and physically regulate my breathing to take in, uh, to adapt to a less uh, oxygen climate. There are multiple ways in which I am responding to one situation that is to climb the Mount Everest. So again, hippocampal will be the one that will make the decision. Now, when it comes to an everyday uh, emotional and your psychological decisions, these are made at the dorsal lateral frontal cortex. This is the frontal part of our brain behind our forehead, which makes cognitive and emotional decisions to stress. What happens here is stressful situations like making hard choices. Uh, I am not feeling well, but I have a lot of work to submit uh, to my workplace. I am not keeping well, but I still have to pack lunch for my family. I still have to take care of the house. I still have to go run my uh, errands and take care of my job. I am not really feeling well. I have 104 fever, but I still have to practice for math Olympiad or I still have to practice for my exams that are coming in next month. So these are the hard decisions that your front prefrontal cortex will have to make uh, in states of emotional or psychological distress. Again, it chooses a flight or fight response. It starts prioritizing what is more important at that point over what is good or what is important at a later point in time. So how we choose and how we make decisions uh, depends on the prefrontal cortex part of the brain. So it also is very important for regulating our emotions. Regulating emotions, for instance, if we watch a horror movie, at that point in time when we get scared of the uh, scenes or we are not ready to watch what is coming next at the peak moment, that time a sense of uh, fear comes into us. We may have, we may shiver or we may tend to avoid looking at the screen or we may start crying or we will have a very heavy breathing because we are scared. So this is how we need our body starts regulating our feelings. Uh, but then this regulation will go haywire under high levels of stress. If we do not contain our stress levels, our emotions will be very difficult to contain and control it or, uh, at a faster rate. We may take more time to calm down. We may take more time to settle down in our work or at home. We may take more time to stop uh, worrying about uh, situations which are not in our control. So the uh, frontal cortex is completely responsible for containing, managing, and maintaining your stress levels which require your thought processes and your feelings. But stress is such a powerful signal, even images or stories are enough to activate stress response in us. It is very easy to show a photo or read a story or even uh, hear a story that is enough to activate our stress levels. I'm not saying it will increase, but it will, uh, it will definitely get activated. But now coming to a very fundamental question, is stress really useful? I want to hear from all of you. What are your thoughts and opinions? Do you think stress is a useful signal for us? No. Oh, Miss Yamuna, would you like to share why it is not an important feeling? Because this is not going to bring any productivity in us. It's not going to bring productive feeling. Okay. Fair enough. Your stress is good according to Divya. Divya, would you like to share what is your opinion or your thoughts on your stress? So, 
limited amount of stress is good because it increases your productivity and then you want to achieve a goal so in that case like limited amount of stress which enhances performance is good according to me thank you divya okay so divya has shared a very nice take on use stress she has found a loophole that to a point stress is very useful we'll come to the use stress part divya uh stress is actually very purposeful and useful because throughout history of mankind stress was the only signal that helped us survive uh without stress it would have been very very difficult for us to uh sustain uh, ourselves from making poor choices uh we would have had to make really poor choices had stress not been there for example imagine we are camping out in a forest and uh, there are some roads there are some sounds we have not heard before we hear them what do you think our first response will be we are in a forest and it is at night time that there is one torch light that is working for you and uh, there are very new noises you are hearing for the first time you have not heard these noises before and you can definitely hear a roaring sound so what, it will be a feeling of horror it will be if something horror. out there is that something is out there that can hurt us correct so we can even get killed there is a feeling or a thought that we might get killed correct so in that situation what is the option we have we can either run away from the situation where we can pack up our things and leave or we may even make up a better thought on trying to find out where the sound is coming from right there are so many thought processes that go on in our mind should i stay should i leave we start uh, uh, taking decisions based on pros and cons so this is where stress helps us it helps us to think straight on how i can or how we can overcome a situation especially unpleasant or unfavorable situations so stress throughout has been seen as divya rightly said uh, in a state of you stress and distress now a state where there is no need for us to uh, have energy levels at a high level where we are in a state of complete relaxation is called being calm uh calm is not a psychological uh, term but it's more of an english adjective where it is a, a stable mindset a stable state of emotions a stable state of your feelings and thoughts where there is no excitation there is no high levels of energy there is no effort being put over there everything is regulated stabilized and it is at a uh, controllable environment now as the kind of work increases as your decision making increases as the kind of uh, demands from the environment increase our stress levels also increase and with that comes optimal performance or optimal stress of you stress you stress is a positive take or a positive spin on stress which kind of pushes us and uh, redirects us to our goals it keeps us focused it keeps us sharp it will give us clarity it will help us make long term and short term goals and more importantly it will help us stabilize what resources are important for example a lot of phd students a lot of students who are work, studying for a longer uh, completing their a longer period of studies usually pays out their academics and their jobs to uh, maintain their uh, flow of uh, flow and balance of studies versus uh, earning the pocket money so they look at the calendar their academic calendar they look at their free availabilities and accordingly pick up jobs to sustain themselves 
पीपल हु वर्क एस इंजीनियर्स पीपल हु वर्क इन मेडिकल प्रोफेशन दे स्टार्ट प्रायोरिटाइजिंग देयर टास्क एंड ड्यूटीज एंड मैनेज द फ्री टाइम अकॉर्डिंगली हाउ सो दिस इज वेयर वी थिंक अबाउट यू स्ट्रेस और स्ट्रेस बींग इन अ फेवरेबल सिचुएशन हाउ एवर इज द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रेस stays with us for a longer duration without a break without any rest our body cannot keep producing the same cortico uh, uh, cortico uh, gluco cortico uh, steroids which uh, is nothing but cortisol and which is nothing but stress hormone it cannot keep continuously from uh, uh, producing cort- uh, cortisol hormones and once it reaches its maximal point is when a uh, burnout mental breakdowns will begin burnout is nothing but a, a stress to a, a response to acute stress where we cannot cope from a very difficult situation instead there is a very low response towards our responsibilities there will be very low take on uh, our duties we uh, there will be high levels of irritation mood disturbances cognitive fatigue cognitive fatigue means forgetting things not being able to recall information and then it also leads to exhaustion and it overall impacts our physical health so uh, stress needs to be regulated for us to be focused but then over the time in history there has never been a scientific uh, distinguish uh, distinguishing factor between eu stress and distress eu stress is uh, what we consider as an english adjective and if there is a eu stress it would also mean that there is a bad stress that we call it as distress so since there is no validity since there is no scientific proof that there is something called good stress versus bad stress we only consider stress as a response uh, most uh, science believes that you stress and distress do not coexist in fact it is nothing but the duration the intensity at which stress will remain how we can break from the stress and what are the stressors which are present in the environment that continuously put stress on a person based on these factors we can judge the person's uh, uh, capacity to endure stress and we can uh, judge or we can assess the person's uh, uh, you know duration at which he has been uh, under con- continuous uh, levels of stress but again there is no validity or evidence that eu stress exists so how do we know that we are under stress how can we say that we uh, have something called stress what are the common signs uh, if anyone would like to share one of the most common signs of stress are in our uh, heartbeat it is in our physical areas that we can first identify the stress so in our physical stress there will be high fluctuations of weight levels we may either decrease weight drastically or there will be a in- drastic increase of weight now this weight may a uh, be a stubborn weight that will be very difficult to reduce or it might be weight that is just gone completely under stress and the person might have difficulty to gain back the uh, healthy weight the next is our heartbeat and breathing issues 
there uh, there will be signs if the stress levels are extremely high uh, beyond the capacity for the body to take in normal condition there will be irregular heartbeat and breathing will be uh, highly highly unstable meaning there will be conscious effort by the person to breathe at times sometimes the other person may forget that he or she is even breathing so there will be very poor regulation of breathing and heartbeat if the breathing is not regular there will be poor circulation of blood in the body which again leads to a lot of heart disease and uh, lung issues now next uh, most common uh, sign of uh, high levels of stress is tiredness now this is not regular tiredness that can be resolved with a nap or which can be resolved with multivitamin intake this tiredness comes from a series uh, a very prolonged episode of stress where they would need to take in uh, lifestyle management of uh, undergoing mental relaxation physical relaxations uh there is a tried and tested technique called jpmr uh, which we will learn as the workshop continues and then there is something called fatigue how many of you have heard of this word fatigue yes nishi yeah ma'am uh, the tiredness and you know sometimes we don't feel regular schedule also we don't feel like doing it that Kar is what i'm able to relate fatigue to fatigue to correct thank you very much for sharing nishi uh, nishi rightly said fatigue is we cannot even come to complete our everyday work or our everyday daily tasks why because the stress response or the stress hormones are extremely uh, at high levels and if they are not contained or if they are not controlled uh, it might lead to exhaustion when a person is exhausted and they have breathing issues at the same time it will completely lead to uh, low motivation dizziness tiredness and they will also have no motivation to get up and complete their work they will be continuously preoccupied with their health issues and it will take them or distract them from their goals or tasks which now leads us to the cognitive state cognitive state is nothing but our mental state if there are high levels of stress the first thing that happens to a person is confusion confusion in the sense there will be highly disorganized uh, people they cannot differentiate between what is important versus what is uh, something that they can keep for a later time they will be disorganized with their short term and long term goals there will be disorganization in their everyday life where there is clutter kept everywhere or they may not be able to do their daily routine or tasks uh, like setting the room or keeping the things neat and clean around there will be they will make plans in their mind that i have to finish setting my house i have to complete my to do list of work i have to cook food i have to go for a walk but it only stays in their mind it never happens in person because they are highly confused and disorganized they keep shifting their attention to different different things now when there is a sudden shift in the attention priority also keeps changing and they lose the sight of what is important and what is not very important now once we uh, uh lose or have attention challenges we will automatically have memory issues as well memory challenges can or cannot come with uh, disorganization memory uh, if there is complete uh, issue or a challenge with memory where you are not able to recall something on an immediate basis or something that was very significant for a person it is called dissociative fugue or it is called as dissociation what happens in this is though the person is physically present in the environment their mind will not be mentally engaged 
they may not even uh, be able to recall what has happened an hour or two ago they forget deadlines they forget meetings they forget that they had set up appointments they will not be able to keep a track of things they may be heavily reliant on notes reminders calendars and alarm clocks they continuously live in a state of autopilot mode so once there is a challenge or a issue in memory it is very difficult for a person to have a meaningful life because memory helps us stay on top of things effectively and once that is not there we tend to forget things and when we forget that there are important tasks to be done we kind of lose our uh, stance uh, with our work so the next one is difficulty with acquiring new skills if the stress continuously pertains in a person's uh, mind or in the physical areas it will be uh, a state of burnout or it will be a state of uh, apathy apathy or apathy means that there is no interest that there is no excitement or there is no motivation or will power to learn a new skill so even if the person is continuously repeating the same activity daily there will be no meaningful learning or engagement towards the skill for example learning the new language even if the person is writing the same letters same numbers in a new language every day there is no guarantee that they will be able to uh, retain that information or actually learn that information out of joy or interest they may not be able to recall what they have studied either why because they are not mentally engaging in the new skill set to learn, to be learned which then again leads to mental fog mental fog is a state where there is a dire confusion confusion is very different from mental fog uh, a simple confusion would be that things are not organized in the mind so there is always a wonderment of what i had to do versus what i should not be doing mental fog on the other hand will be did i have to do that was it my responsibility to do this it is uh, uh, like they have forgotten about the task as well as how to do the task sometimes they will forget for how long the task is supposed to be done so mental fog is a most serious state of simple confusion and disorganization and if the stress continues for years together uh, and does not seem to go away it leads to psychiatric disorders like dissociation how many of you have heard this term uh, ptsd have you any one of you heard this term post traumatic stress disorder yes ma'am yes ma'am post traumatic stress disorder is a psychiatric disorder where the person is under high levels of stress the events are so significant the events are so traumatizing to the person that even after years of the event that has happened they cannot seem to forget consciously they have forgotten but somewhere in their memory or somewhere in their mind the events are stored so for example people who come out of war people who go for war like officers or uh, you know people from defense when they come back to their home they find it very difficult to adjust to the new environment because they're not used to a routine that uh, you know is involving a civilian our routine is to wake up look after ourselves look after our family go for work come back Uh, have you know a nice evening with our family and you know call it the day but it is a very different lifestyle for them where they consistently thinking about work and they consistently engaged in the uh, battle ground or they're thinking always about what to uh, do next what to plan next so when they continuously exposed to that levels of stress and they suddenly are uh, removed from it there is a state of mental confusion and what happens then is they become very confused and they may appear to be well adjusted they may appear to be 
क्वाइट हैप्पी बट अ स्मॉल ट्रिगर लाइक से कलर अ कलर और अ साउंड और अ वॉइस मे ट्रिगर द पर्सन अगेन दे मे बी रिमाइंडेड ऑफ एन इवेंट और एन एपिसोड और एन इंसिडेंट दैट विल ब्रिंग बैक द स्ट्रेसफुल मेमरीज सॉरी एंड दैट अगेन लीड्स टू a stressful response to the situation that has happened even years ago uh, yes nishi uh, ma'am this is just a question out of curiosity that too much stress over a long period of time can it lead to disorders like dementia and alzheimers also <coughs> it's actually a very good question nishi uh, though today a lot of researchers are saying that there can be signs of uh dementia especially uh alzheimer's is mostly to do with uh, cognitive disorientation so if our mind is very free if we don't cognitively or mentally keep engaging ourselves this when alzheimer's is most likely to happen but dementia is again a uh, something on a subject that today we are researching heavily on if stress is directly linked to dementia or not there is no clear answer to that today as well nishi okay thank you so much ma'am but it's a really good question to wonder and then uh with ptsd there is another form of dissociation called dissociative fugue dissociative fugue i've already explained initially it was only with people with who uh, forgot about their time and place and would take up a new personality or take up an entire persona uh, leave their home leave their hometown or uh, take up a new identity elsewhere but today dissociative fugue signs are also seen in everyday people who are not able to cope with the challenges who are not able to cope with situations that are presented in front of them <laughs> then comes the emotional aspect uh in the first and the most impulsive common response to stress will be being cranky complaining uh not being very proactive about the situation uh finding it very difficult to adapt or to accommodate themselves to complete the task which again over time leads to high reactive energies where a small trigger for example a person uh works 15 hours 16 hours a day in the office and uh, they realize that this is not working for them and with a lot of difficulty they come out of their jobs and they're still coping from uh, the kind of stress they have undergone and they see a folder outside in a restaurant one day that folder may be enough to evoke a reaction out of them reaction may not always be expressive it may not always be uh, you know very very evident it could be a, ex- a facial expression also it could also be in again i'm seeing a folder or again i have to see the uh, same thing what i saw in our office so it may be obvious it might not be very obvious but the reaction levels will always be very high the next is aggression aggression is not always hitting a person or beating up or yelling or screaming it might also be defensive why should i do this work it is not in my capacity i don't think i want to do it i am not in a mood to do this why should i always do this who are you to tell me to do this work why should i listen to you so this is the a defensive uh, aggressive reaction sometimes it can also be more confrontational who are you to tell me that i should do my work so oh, if i don't do what will you do about it oh, what is wrong with you these are a lot more confrontational and more uh, response evoking aggressive responses so uh, when our stress levels are not in check and when a person is highly irritable aggressive responses become very common and the next one is tired emotionally tired is a very uh, pop culture reference where we mean to say that the person is very emotionally tired to respond or react to situation it might sound in sentences like let it be whatever will happen will happen why should i always respond to this 
is it important for me to react now i can take care of it later also no a lot of uh, escape avoidance uh, sentences will be heard when a person is uh, emotionally tired or just not able to respond to the situation it is on the other spectrum of the aggressive reaction are there any questions any doubts so far okay so we come to the last and the most important bit which is the coping techniques why we focus on coping techniques is because stress is a very good uh, signal for us to start working on things for us to stay motivated and for us to stay on top of things but over a period of time if the stress levels are not regulated by self if we don't practice or if we don't take care of ourselves on a daily basis that little by little little by little little by little the stress levels keep on increasing and they do not come down so there is a very uh, interesting show on uh, youtube that explains stress really well it is called uh, uh i forgot the show's name there are three people in it uh it's based out of uh, office where they t- uh there is a fire in the office one day but this person is very busy saving uh you know his work on the computer and does not focus on the fact that his life is in danger is very very worried about fixing a small thing as compared to saving himself from the fire and instead of calling the fire department he sends out an email so how what do you think of this situation that there is a fire in your own office you are in a room with the fire and instead of calling the fire station you send out an email to them that there is a fire what do you make of the situation ma'am the person is too stressed to you know care about other things and the ta- the challenge which he is facing probably in the job has overburdened him so much that he doesn't really care is this is what i will be thinking at that time that let it what even if the office burns down doesn't matter i should get this fixed asap right nishi wonderful so this person is done and dusted with the kind of stress he's used to it is what you're saying right yeah ma'am wonderful nishi there's another way to look at it which is the yes sorry hello a procurement price okay there is another pers- uh, perspective for this which is dissociation this person is so dissociative to uh, dissociated to the gravity of the situation that he is not able to make a balanced decision on how to go about solving the crisis he is not only putting himself in danger he is putting the entire staff in danger by not responding actively to the stress so the dissociation is so powerful in my opinion i had felt where uh, this person could have possible uh, need to visit uh, you know a, a therapy or any sort of counseling uh, that's how i felt when i saw the uh, show Uh, by the way i recalled it is called the it crowd uh, it is freely available on youtube and i think it is called the fire the episode is called the fire something i will share the link at the end of the uh, session so this is why coping techniques are very important if we do not take care of ourselves on a daily basis it's not difficult to take care of ourselves right it's small things like taking time for a walk or spending time with our family or calling and checking on our friends uh, or just spending time by ourselves <laughs> so a lot of things uh, help us recover from stress on a daily basis however let us not undermine the actual coping techniques uh, the first one which we actively uh, try to do ourselves is 
something called cognitive restructuring. Cognitive restructuring is a very powerful tool where we start assessing our thoughts and feelings uh, where, and find out what is working in our favor versus what is faulty and what is causing us to increase the stress levels in us. For example, uh, there has to uh, you had to wake up in the morning and make a breakfast for your entire family. Now, this was your task of making breakfast, but somehow you woke up at uh, half an hour later than what you decided. Instead of waking up at uh, 6 o'clock, you woke up at 6.30. Now, though you have woken up at 6.30, you start blaming yourself that you had promised everyone you would make breakfast, but you still woke up late. So there is something wrong with you. And then you start questioning yourself. What did I do wrong? What is wrong with me? Was sleep so important? Why did my alarm not ring? Right? Then you will also start wondering, now do I have to cook? I planned so much. Now, though I planned so much, now everything is waste. Why? Because I woke up half an hour late. Everyone will be hungry and everyone will blame me for not making and that I have not given food on time. So let me give the responsibility to someone who's already an expert with cooking and I will do the work tomorrow. Are there any faulty thinkings or faulty thoughts over here? So the faulty thought here is that though I woke, uh, I woke up here a half an hour late, so let me give the responsibility to someone who is already good with cooking and taking uh, care of breakfast. So even though we were half an hour, uh, woke up half an hour late, that still means we need to reframe and start restructuring into finding possible options. Uh, acknowledging the fact that we woke up half an hour late is the first step. That yes, I woke up half an hour late, I am late, but it doesn't mean that the world has ended right away. Nobody is going to scold me or nobody is going to make me feel bad about waking up late, right? It's just breakfast. It is not the most important thing that had to be done. So now you start reframing and restructuring the entire situation. And then you start finding possible options or possible solutions to uh, address this issue. For example, uh, reframing and restructuring options would look like, I cannot make a very complex breakfast, but I can still make toast, butter, and jam for everyone. That still counts as breakfast. It can be done on time, and everyone will be uh, full uh, even after eating the breakfast. And it is easier for me to clean the dishes. So what happens here? You are finding a possible solution or an option that fits you and fits your work at the best place. Uh, this helps us avoid blaming ourselves or blaming or handling the responsibilities to someone else. It reduces the chances of uh, shaming ourselves or shaming the other person. And more importantly, it will help us uh, stop avoiding our responsibilities. So cognitive restructuring is a very, very important tool where we pick a situation, assess it bit by bit, and find the best possible solution without <coughs> causing panic or stress to us. Uh, the other one is interceptive exposure. Now, interceptive uh, exposure is nothing but slowly and carefully uh, wondering as to what is causing this uh, panic, what is causing the stress response, and how can I realize, and in what ways I can realize that this is not dangerous or hurtful for me. In interceptive exposure, we start rationally uh, looking at the situation without uh, the situation affecting us uh, by uh, helping us avoid or escape. And a classic example here will look like 
for example in interceptive exposure we say that every time i look at math or i look at a, a subject i really don't like my first response is to close the book and run away or to blame it the on the school or teachers saying that uh, teachers were not there in the school today i don't have math homework or even better i lost my notebook if there is no notebook and if math teacher is not there i don't have to worry so this is my escape avoidance response to approaching math as a subject now if i am made to approach the subject by hook or by crook method where my uh, family or my relatives put me for tuition or the math teacher catches me and says you have to come after classes and uh, study with me now that is going to create a sense of panic and anxiety in the child so what is the better way to approach this in front of except for direct confrontation instead of directly dealing with it and all at go we start logically assessing the place where the fear is coming from what about maths is causing that fear what about that subject is causing low motivation for me to approach that topic so here we mentally rationally and logically start assessing the fear for which i uh, the person has towards the subject what is the causation behind it and find solutions accordingly so say the reason why maths is scary is because i'm able to solve half of the problem but the minute x value y value begin to come in and i have to solve for the x and the y which was never there to begin with in the uh, previous uh, sums i don't know how to handle that it feels like it's all new things i have to learn again i am not interested in learning so instead of directly confronting the child by making them attend tuitions for longer hours or making them stay back in the school it is better to give sample practice sums uh, where the child dedicates 15 to 20 minutes daily just practicing that one sum that bothers them the most though this introspective exposure takes time it takes a lot of effort it reduces stress drastically and it also takes away a lot of uncertainty from the person's mind and more importantly it builds self confidence and self esteem in the child or the person who is undergoing this a lot of self esteem and sense of control comes over the situation so it is and they get a idea a sense of self awareness of where this irrational fear was coming from to begin with so that is where interceptive exposure works the best for stress management and the next one is exposure and response prevention exposure is nothing but you purposefully expose to yourself to the trigger and control your responses for example uh there is a person who is scared of lizards or cockroaches now there is no way of avoiding a situation where lizards and cockroaches are very common in everybody's house it is not something that is very novel to only some people or to some colonies or to some localities they are present in every possible place so now instead of fighting the situation or resenting the situation Uh, of saying of being stubborn that i will not leave the house i will only go to my cousin's place or relative's place i will not go to public areas i will not do this i will not do that instead of having a solid resentment mentally preparing a person for the task or the activity first where they can use visualization techniques where they will learn that yes i can visualize the scenario where a lizard is in the next room the lizard is on the top of the wall next to the tube light the lizard is slowly sit, carefully sitting there right or the insect is sitting over there the insect is minding his or her own business 
I don't have to go and look at it. It is in the next room. Is it hurting me? No. Is it harming me? No. But the fear response will not immediately go away. But when we continuously change the thought by asking ourselves, is it hurting me? Is it harming me? And keep pushing the logical aspect of the fear with the towards the fear. What happens is the fear levels will automatically reduce. And once the visualization reduces certain amount of fear, we can start physically uh, facing the challenge where we will first go to the room where the lizard is present by not directly entering the room, but at least standing next to the door. Once we stand next to the door, say for two minutes, we increase it to five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And once the person is confidently approaching the door, the next step will be stepping inside the room where the insect is present. Now, once we enter the room where the insect is present, there is again a chance the person will run away. But they are okay and comfortable with standing next to the door. So we uh, reinforce it positively by saying, I'm proud of you for standing next to the door. Now our next task is to enter the room. So gradually, slowly, deliberately, we expose to the stressor to gain our response <clears throat> that is lesser in stress and we can adapt and uh, you know exercise our willpower and con- self-control uh, very very easily so that is the whole purpose of exposure and response prevention so now the last bit is uh, these are some things on a very daily basis we can do to reduce our daily stressors daily stressors are the signals that are sent to us with the traffic noise getting stuck in traffic, people shouting nearby, screaming noises or loud disturbing noises, foul smell. Sometimes uh, there is too much of pressure at work. People are not understanding your perspectives. You feel like your day has not been done. You feel exhausted mentally, physically, emotionally. There was a fight or an argument with someone. These are events or stressors that don't uh, occur in an eventful way. These are an everyday situation that is something that we are very used to or that happens on a routine basis. So to overcome daily stressors, it is very important that we practice journaling, grounding and venting. Journaling is a written expression. Grounding is physically releasing the stress by connecting with the nature or by connecting to your local environment. And venting is an emotional expression of how you're feeling, what are you feeling, and what are the ways in which you can overcome these feelings. So you can completely vent by either physically releasing the stress, by writing it down on a paper or on your dedicated notebook, or you can share your thoughts or feelings with someone like a friend or a therapist or your family relative or your best friend, where you're just releasing it verbally by either ranting or by uh, expressing and sharing your distress. Now, the next thing which is more important is separating from the stresses. Now, this is where uh, setting boundaries come in a very big, uh, efficient highlight. What we mean by separating from the stressors is to keep a distance from uh, a situation that will bring us stress. We cannot avoid uh, stressors at work. Work will come in. People will call you for meetings or you will be given things that are beyond your control. People are going to scream. People are going to yell or they throw their problems at us. But... It is how we respond and how much of it we want to take in that is in our control. So learning how much control we have over the situation and drawing a line between us and the stressor is something that helps us uh, keep ourselves in check. And the next most important overrated under practiced uh, activity is to reduce screen time. 
there is no reason for us to uh, sit and you know uh, doom scroll over internet like on instagram or youtube short reels or even on uh, uh, tumblr or reddit there is no reason for us to sit for longer hours or more than an hours time instead of spending time with our family unless any one of you is a digital creator where you that is your line of work there has to be no reason except for simple recreation screens are meant for recreation they are not meant for us to escape or avoid our work or escape avoid even people and getting a regular hobby is one of the best ways to uh, separate yourself from the stressors it is also one of the best ways to reduce screen time and it will help you bring a meaning and purpose in your life a lot of people have hobbies uh, collecting coins collecting stamps people have a hobby of nowadays collecting rare stamps uh, people have habits of collecting passport stamps on their passports by you know choosing places to travel uh, people opt for puzzle collections at home people have mandala collections where they draw mandala and ho- hold uh, books and uh, supplies of mandalas with them so a hobby is a great way to redirect your attention to something that brings joy from inside that brings joy from uh, your heart and your feelings play and hobbies are not limited for children alone they are especially important for adults and exercises again exercises shouldn't be complicated it should not be where you are putting stress on yourself exercises can be as simple as meditation or it could be simply going for a small walk it could be simply uh, you know rotating our muscles or our joints for releasing any stress uh, so that way exercises are a great way to uh, re-energize ourselves uh, one thing i would also like to add at the end is the power of boredom i would like to ask all of you here how many of you meaningfully sit with your own thoughts how many of you like to sit with your thoughts and feelings where you continuously look at your day where you think about what has happened throughout what can i do next how many of you sit and dream dream or have imagination in your mind okay there are three four people who have raised their hands boredom or sitting thank you i guess there are five of you who do that it's very wonderful to know actually having being bored or having nothing to do is one of the great ways and the most efficient ways to reset our minds many people are scared to be bored or they are not comfortable being bored because they don't know what to expect from it we don't understand how important or how impactful all of this is uh, because of which we have continuous distractions around us like uh, you know watching movies or shows on otts uh, continuously uh, spending time with our uh, friends or relatives which is again great but then it goes beyond the time where you know you have to draw a line but you're not able to do that why because again you'll have to spend time with self and that again leads to a cycle of escape and avoidance which is why it is very important to sit with our own thoughts our feelings our energies to really understand what we think where our thoughts come from what pushes us what doesn't work for us how we can choose to react better to situations that are around us right so this way boredom is one of the most precious and the most uh, core practices i think we should pra- uh, be following on a daily on a regular basis just 15 minutes of boredom i think will help us realign our thoughts Uh, so these are the articles i have chosen uh, at the end of the series if anyone requires these i'd share these articles with all of you
and thank you for giving us your time.